My name is Aiden Celebrini. I'm a 2023 NHL draft prospect, and I only touch greatness. Perfect. All right. My name is Macklin Celebrini. I'm a 2024 NHL draft prospect, and I only touch greatness. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, sent you. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Lay down. Drumheller net. Puck recovered by Armstrong. It front Celebrini. Wrist shot. He scores! Keep that puck! Aided Celebrini's first AJHL goal. Twirling the stick over to the fist bumps as he picks the top corner and makes it 4 1. Brooks. Back from Brisson. Down right to Perron. Thompson's in the slot. Celebrini left side. Down left. Celebrini. Rister scores! Welcome to the United States Hockey League, Macklin Celebrini. Easy Mac. This exhibition season passes up by Celebrini, catches it, wrist shot, scores! 40 seconds into the game, the For those that don't know, tell us about your childhood, both born in Vancouver. Um, you know, yeah, both grew up uh, doing a lot of uh, training at the North Shore Winter Club. Um, lived at the rink, lived like two minutes away, so got to spend uh, most of our childhood there, just uh, skating and training, so... Yeah, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of time spent there. Then, you guys uh, been- just recently, oh sorry. No, no, you go ahead, but no, I was interrupting. Uh, yeah, just recently moved out to uh, California for uh, dad's work, so we've um, kind of uh, definitely a different different landscape there when it comes to hockey. But making the most of it, found some great. Uh, Great people to work with down there. That's just it. You guys miss the rain? <laughs> Not too much. Not too much. <laughs> yeah, it's pouring here in Vancouver right now. I literally—that's what I was trying to do—is go close my door, so because it was pouring so bad. 
uh, and then uh, so Mac, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, good. Chicago's great. So, how was your childhood growing up? I mean, not much different from Ains. Uh, just always, always at the North Shore Club, skating, just, just having fun on the rink, and just playing hockey. You guys play any other sports growing up, or was it always just hockey? Big, uh, big soccer family. Um, always played basketball one on one and stuff against each other. But uh, yeah, I had a had a big, uh, big competition growing up between soccer and hockey, especially our our dad being a professional soccer player and working in the soccer soccer field. So yeah, it was. Um, Definitely, uh, definitely hard for him to hear that uh, both of us <laughs> to be hockey players. That's just it. Having a dad in the soccer field, uh, is there anything you guys have really learned from him about the, the like being a professional? Mac, you want this one? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, like just all the players. I mean, I mean now, like his job, just working with. So many professional players, like whether it's hockey, soccer, basketball, um, just like working with all those players, just all the things he's learned, he's kind of tried to teach us and all the things he's picked up, he's kind of related to us. So I feel like that's, that's really helped us just grow and just try to work that into us and how we develop. So I feel like that's a big part of who we are. Okay. Um, what are some short-term goals and what are you trying to accomplish this year? Uh, for me, obviously, get drafted this year, um, win a national championship up here in the CJHL. Um, but yeah, definitely um, what trumps all that is, uh, yeah, just fulfilling the lifelong goal of uh, getting drafted in the NHL and continuing that uh, uh, development process. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's, I mean, obviously kind of the same thing. Just getting better every day and just hopefully improve over the season and just see um, my game evolve and stuff. And I obviously won a championship, the Clark Cup. That'd be pretty special. You mentioned improve. Uh, is there one aspect of your game you're each looking to improve? I'd say, uh, say for me, definitely trying to develop the offensive game as much as I can. I know it's um, definitely becoming more, more part of the game for defensemen to, uh, to look to contribute offensively and uh, trying, to, trying to improve that as much as I can without obviously sacrificing uh, what's, what's gotten me success recently is uh my defensive game okay yeah and uh obviously for me um uh, i've just been trying to work on like just doing video and just working on working off the puck i mean i feel like that's a big part of the game especially at the higher level is just being able to put yourself in the right spots at the right time and i feel like that's that's one thing that i've i've really been focusing on so, if I'm, my stats are correct, you guys have both played at Shattuck, St. Mary. Um, what's that like being at that historic uh, team? You know, it's, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely lives up to the hype for sure. They uh, have a great development program set up where you can really take control of your own, uh, your own future. So, however... However much time you want to put into it, it uh, it won't make you a great hockey player, but it'll definitely give you the resources to to do it for yourself. So it's been super super uh, important for Mac and I's development. Okay. Mac, what do you think, bud? Yeah, I feel like I mean Shattuck. It's really up to you. Like it gives you all the resources and all the ice that you want and all the, all the facilities, but um, it's really up to you to like decide and like, if you really want it, if you want it, you'll 
use those resources and it'll improve so much. But if it's not your thing, then you just won't really. So it's kind of up to you. And it just makes each guy like kind of make their decision on how they want to approach it. Yeah, that's true. We've had a bunch of uh, alumni, I guess, on the show. Uh, they kind of said it the same way. Shattuck can lead. It's like a horse. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink it. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> they can steer you in the right direction, but whether you want to take the ball and run with it, right? Exactly. So for both of you guys, uh, do you have any hobbies outside of sports? Uh, we both love to fish, um, even though we uh, can't seem to find enough time for <laughs> it nowadays. But, uh, yeah, we both definitely love fishing, uh, try to get on the course. Um, yeah, I've been, uh, been picking up been picking up a guitar. Mac can, Mac can vouch that I'm not great yet, but uh, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> How bad is it, Mac? I don't know. He he, I mean he's getting he's getting there, but he still needs some work. That's for sure. <laughs> so uh, being brothers and uh, obviously a hockey family and a soccer family, uh, how were the battles growing up? You guys must have been battling against each other, playing little down in the basements. Oh yeah, we've definitely uh, definitely had some uh, grueling battles down there, pretending to be. Uh, rival NHL teams and stuff and um, definitely got some bumps and bruises along the way uh, but kind of taught us to be uh, be competitors yeah you got anything Mac yeah I mean we battle it out for sure just whether it's mini sticks or shooting pox or whatever it's always it's always a competition between us and I, I mean I love it so who wins Works in an arm? Who wins in an arm wrestle? I would say Aiden, just because like he's eighteen now. So yeah. like, I mean, he has the age advantage. But I mean, I'll, I'll so get got there. him. I'll, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get there. Yeah, it's coming. Don't worry, man. There will yeah. be a day that you'll take over. Exactly. Uh, what do you guys think makes a good athlete? Definitely. Um a drive and a hunger to uh, not only get better every day, but to also, to also win in competition. That's um, you gotta, you gotta be able to play for your team as well as yourself. And um, yeah, so high compete, high work ethic, and just, just uh, coachability, just an ability to learn and take in information and, look to improve every day, just a growth mindset. Mac? Mac? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll go. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like kind of what Ian said, like just being coachable. I mean, having that compete and hunger to get better every day, I feel like that's really important. Um, but I feel like just always wanting to learn, which is part of that coachability, like, so always, always looking to get better and always like finding a way to get better. I feel it's the biggest thing. So if you guys were having a dream dinner party and you can invite three famous people that are alive, who are you bringing? That's uh, that's the age old question. Yeah, that's my favorite question. If you've seen any of the other episodes, <laughs> I always like to hit that one. Yeah, uh, there's so many, so many good, uh, good figures. I'd, I'd have to say um, Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, and Nicholas Lidstrom. Those would be my three. Okay. I, I would go Wayne Gretzky. I think I'd go Tiger Woods, and I'd go probably MJ as well. Oh, okay. sir. For so. me, I personally go with uh, Tupac, Seth Rogen, because I think it would be funny to sit around and talk jokes to Seth Rogen. And if it's not Wayne Gretzky, it's Paulina Gretzky. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's, that's a good one. That's, yeah, that's you got to have something to look at at your table, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So you guys have both chosen Boston University. Um, Mac, you were actually taken 21st overall by Seattle, but why did you guys both choose to go to the NCAA route? Um, you know, it just gives, especially for me, gives, uh, gives you that runway, gives you that time to develop your game. And, uh, yeah, that's so crucial just to not rush your process. Like take as much time as you can to, to develop every facet of your game so that when you do, um, get the opportunity to take the step to the, the, uh, hopefully the next level and you're, uh, you're as ready as you can be to stick around there. And, uh, yeah, so we've been, we've been, uh, definitely taught that at a young age to just take your time and look at every day, like, uh, like it's another chance to develop. And so there's really, really no rush. And it also just prepares you to play against, uh, older, older competition. It kind of bridges that gap for when you, uh, when you take the step. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, for me, it was, it was really about, um, like just whatever, like, so originally, like I, I had to choose between Chicago and Seattle and I chose Chicago just because of their, um, like how they develop their players and their reputation and like what I saw when I went and visited them, how they, how they run things, like what they do on the ice and in practice and in the weight room, how like they pay attention to detail and everything's kind of looked after. So that was a big factor. And then from there is again, looking at BU and just seeing that they have the same, same details and they, they pay attention to the same things. They're always looking to get better. They're like, they're looking to make their players better and they're also looking to improve too. So it's just always getting better. And um, I feel like BU has, has those coaches and they have a great staff that will help us succeed. So I felt like that was, that was a huge, huge factor in choosing BU. Yeah, not the first brothers to play for Chicago Steel, that's for sure, with the Fantillies being there and then the Hughes's. Oh, actually, the Hughes's didn't play there, but the Fantillies is what I meant. Mm-hmm. They, uh, that's a great place. We've had on like Owen Power and when he was there it's with the steel and what kind of lasting impressions do you think legends like that make? I mean, I, I feel like it definitely helps with um, like recruiting and stuff, but it's also like, it's a, like it, it shows what they do and how they, how they do it. Like they have their development, like it shows the product and like it shows if you use it and like utilize all their opportunities, you can, you can do some really, really cool things. Eden, you got some? Um, yeah, uh, it's just, um, yeah, just obviously being being here in Brooks is just a great, uh, great organization that's really cemented themselves on winning as well as developing. Like, uh, you know, having Kale McCarr come through here and his brother Taylor and you know they really put a uh, put an emphasis on developing but also winning like they uh, they have that competitive nature like built into the organization where anything less than a championship is uh, is failure that's for sure great franchise as well um, do you guys have a favorite road barn Hmm, that's a tough one. You know, uh, definitely feel like uh, some barns, especially up here in the in the AJ, are a lot more uh, appealing to play in than others. Uh, <laughs> I mean, our home barn can't get much better than that in uh, anywhere. So, but if I had to say a way barn, it's a tough one. I'd have to say uh, maybe Black Falls Bulldogs. Okay, up up there in, uh, in the middle of middle of Alberta. Yeah, <laughs> Mac. If I could, I mean, I've only played at a couple away yeah. away games, but um, so far it'd be it'd be Green Bay, Green Bay Gamblers. They uh, 
that was sick arena. So that'd probably be mine. Okay, yeah, we actually hear that all the time. That it's a great venue and it's mm-hmm. uh, the crowd experience is great as well. Yeah. Do you guys have a dream venue you wish to play in one day? Definitely, uh, definitely. You got it? No, no, you go. (laughs) (laughs) We'll go, uh, I'd have to say Rogers Arena, like, just to be able to play in that barn that me and my brother uh, have skated on from when we were just little guys and gone to, uh, gone to many different, uh, different skates and stuff pretending that we were um we were living that dream so it definitely has to be rogers arena in front of our our uh hometown yeah honestly i would do the same but i don't i don't want to copy aiden so i what i was thinking was an outdoor game like uh, like somewhere like fenway park or something that that'd probably be my dream yeah it doesn't even matter you just want the outdoor game Exactly. Okay. That's that's true. Did you guys ever play in between the Canucks? Like in, in between periods? I I actually what my team did once when we were a lot younger. But, yeah, um, of course. Yeah, that, that was really cool. Yeah, I never I never got the uh got the chance to, but uh definitely with our dad working uh working with the organization, we've Spent some uh, spent some early mornings out there, just uh, yeah, soaking it all in. That's one thing I always regret too: never getting to skate during an intermission as a kid. It haunts yeah, me. To this. Yeah. It haunts. It haunts me forty years later, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any pregame rituals? Um, you know, just uh, this my whole. My whole process, I kind of take it step by step. It's not really uh, a ritual in a superstition sense, but just just makes me feel prepared for the game. Like uh, I think it was Nick Lidstrom that said he's not he's not superstitious, but uh, the fact that he does the same thing before every game lets him know that he's uh, he's prepared to play every night. So I kind of like to take that approach. Um, definitely reach for the the skipping rope and warm ups to try to get the feet going and uh, definitely try to get some, uh, some coffee in me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. For me, I think I have some superstitions. I mean, if some works, I kind of hold on to it. Like what stick I'm using, what the tape job is like kind of play all those factors, like where I put my stick after warm ups. Like oh, I, really? I kind of, I kind of, like whatever's worked, I kind of just kind of keep it rolling, and I just see if it works again. So, okay. So uh, the twenty twenty Aiden, your twenty twenty three draft prospect. How are you preparing for it? And then Mac, you're regarded as one of the top prospects in the twenty twenty four draft. How are you preparing for it? You know, it's uh, it's really easy to kind of get caught up in all the uh, all the excitement and anticipation cuz like I said earlier you dream for you dream for this year and this uh that day um your entire hockey career but it's it's really been my uh, my main focus to just keep uh keep my head down and just work on trying to get better trying to improve my game every single day and play to play to win win these games uh this year and just let the future um kind of handle itself okay yeah like like Ian said it's it's really easy to like look forward and look into the future and just kind of um get excited about that day and like how 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 happy you'll be but you kind of just want to take it day by day and just try to keep getting better every day because you can't can't control what happens in the future and as long as you're taking care of business right now everything will work out so mac how are you looking forward to the u17s next week oh i'm pumped i'm so yeah. excited yeah it's gonna be that's gonna be super fun what's it feel like putting on that canada jersey 
I mean, it's just honor. Like I'm honored and yeah. I'm like, it's, it's pride. And I mean, it's everything that like I watched like every world juniors when I was younger, like it's everything I've dreamed of. So it's definitely super, super exciting. I know you got to run into me next week. I'm going to be out there. I got tickets for Friday and Saturday, both weekends. So I'll see All you. Right. I'll, I'll see you there. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you guys got a third little brother coming along the way. Does he play hockey as well? Yeah. Yeah. He is does. he just as good as you two? Uh, he's got the potential to be better. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Some say he's definitely. already better, but I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Might have to get him on the show in a couple of years. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what's one lesson that a coach has taught you that you never forget? That's a good one. Um, oh, so many great coaches taught us each different uh, different lessons that contribute to how we are as players and people. But uh, I'd say Coach Ward, legendary Coach Ward from uh, Shattuck, has definitely taught us just how to how to carry ourselves on and off the ice. Just let our uh, let our play do the talking and um, remain humble, remain hungry. And uh, yeah, just take every day and try to continue to de develop as players. Cause you never really, you never really uh, too good. You <laughs> never really reach, reached your goal. Yep. Yeah. I'd have to go with the same thing. Coach Ward, he's such a big influence on, me and it and even though we were there for one year um he made such a big impact on both of us and he taught us so many great lessons and that was definitely a huge one just stay humble no matter what and um just keep your head down and keep working and um like you you don't have to talk about yourself like you, you just let what you do on the ice talk for yourself so i feel like that's really important is there something you guys look for in a good coach You know, uh, there, um, yeah, there are definitely uh, a lot of good qualities, but um, yeah, it's just uh, just an approachability and uh, an effort in helping us become better. Like, I feel like it's so underappreciated what a good coach, like we've had um, a few good coaches and uh, good good skills coaches and Cole Todd and uh, Phil Hewn down in California. And they've just been so key because of their relentless uh, work ethic. And they, they help us get better because they're there with us and they, they uh, sacrifice a lot of time to help us on our, on our path. So I think that's, um, that's a very appreciated uh, trait and, good coaches is just the the time they put in and the uh the effort okay yeah i mean obviously it's important that every coach you have has the care and the like the willingness to help you get better i feel like that's really important and that's like what a lot of coaches have told us it's um <clears throat> they're not yelling to get mad at us they're yelling at us because they care i feel like that's really important like you can't take what they're saying to you in a wrong way just because they're being loud. Like, like they're not being mean. They're just trying to help you in the best way they know how. And I feel like that's really important. Um, just being like, like a coach that's hard on their team because they hold you accountable and they know what you're capable of and they don't let you, um, you do anything under that. So I feel like that's really important. What were your guys' first impressions of the, Boston University coach there, Jay Pendolfo, good NHLer. Oh yeah, he's uh, not a bad word to say about him. <laughs> yeah. Great person, great hockey mind. Um, definitely a massive part on uh, why we chose chose to go there. Really, really crucial part on why we chose to go there. He's just yeah, very very down to earth, and you can tell he's. He's uh, going to do a lot of great things at, uh, at Boston. 
Yeah, like, um, I mean, he is a big reason on why we we chose Bill. Um, like I said, their coaching coaching staff in general, but especially him. You can tell he, like, I mean, obviously he played in the NHL for a very long time, so yeah. he knows knows what he's talking about. But he's a he's a better person than anything. Um, just the conversations we had, he's just he's a great person and a trustworthy person. So I feel like he's just he's a great guy and obviously a great coach. That's just it. You guys have this is your first chance and probably your only chance you actually get to choose your own destiny. You get to choose what school you go to because you're going to be drafted somewhere and you're going to be traded somewhere and you're going to be like down the road. This is your one chance to choose where you guys wanted to go. So you guys chose a good school. We've interviewed a bunch of kids that have gone through BU as well. So we love it. Uh, What is your personal highlight this far in your career? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Definitely had to be, uh, had to be choosing to go to Boston University. It's, it just kind of, um, was not only a mark of how far, uh, how far we've come, but definitely, uh, a look into, to how exciting our future can be with that school. I mean, they've got a, uh, they've got a great program set up and, um, as young players trying to develop, it's, uh, I can speak for me and Mac when I say we're both so eager to, uh, to get there and, and, uh, develop with those amazing, uh, amazing coaches. Mac, you want to add anything? I again covered it. Do you? That's that's definitely a special landmark and a special journey in the future that I think we both can't wait to to take. What are you guys planning on majoring in? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I've I've always been very uh, fascinated by medicine and um, hope to uh if hockey doesn't work out go into the uh, orthopedic surgery field so looking uh looking to major in that or yeah. uh yeah or i know they have a great business program so um looking into that as well okay major 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 um <laughs> you got you got many years still to check it out you you don't have to pick yeah. something if you don't want yeah, exactly. Like I don't, I don't think I'm too sure on what I'm gonna major. That's <laughs> a big decision. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for that. Okay. Uh, do you guys have a favorite sports franchise? It doesn't have to be hockey. Golden State Warriors. I mean, we're kind of we're kind of biased because yeah, of our dad. But uh, they got such a they're on the path to greatness. They've got such a winning culture there. And, um, yeah, obviously it's just, it's amazing to, uh, just see our, see our, uh, our father have an impact, no matter, no matter how big or small an impact on such a, such a storied franchise. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of within the Golden State Warriors. They're just in, from all their championships, but not just that. Like the people in that organization are just like great people, and they they do it the right way. And they're they're honest people. So I mean, from that and from, I mean, obviously their greatness from what they accomplished. Yeah. I mean, I, it goes together really, really well. Yeah, so are you guys – the home base is down there then in San Jose? Yeah, now uh, now it's in Livermore, Livermore, okay. California. Um, yeah, still still love to try to go back to Vancouver because that's where we spent 14 years of our lives. But, uh, yeah, definitely definitely enjoying our, uh, our new home. Okay. And 
the way you were talking, does your old man work for the Golden State Warriors? Yeah, he's the uh, director of, or I guess VP now of uh, player health and performance. So oh. it's definitely, uh, yeah, definitely cool to see him in such a in such a big role with that team. Okay, so as a Canuck fan, as you can see, and season ticket holder, uh, why would you two be the best choices for my Vancouver Canucks? Um, I'd have to say, uh, yeah, definitely um, feel the teams as a fellow Canuck fan, uh, feel the teams uh, looking for some a good, solid uh, defensive defenseman. And, I, yeah, I feel like I can – that's my uh, my calling card is my defense. And, uh, yeah, obviously being a hometown kid, that would be a, a dream to, to play there someday. We definitely need defense, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, also, as Canucks being my favorite team, um, it's, it, we're going through a tough time, but yeah. I feel like um, – I feel like some of my strengths are just creating plays and, um, uh, yeah, like just using using my uh, speed and my hands to create plays and create different opportunities and um, set, set up my line mates. So I feel like on the offensive part, Aiden's got the defense, so I feel like on the offensive part I could, I could be more of a help. I mean, if – doesn't sound like a bad rebuild if we got a rebuild and this year we get Madar and we get you next year, Mac. That'd be crazy. Yeah, wouldn't that be something? If you guys could get in a time machine and go to any year you want, where would you want to go? Um, I've been told a lot I'm uh, an older soul, so maybe, maybe go back. Uh, 70s, 80s. I love the uh, love just the the vibe of that that era. Okay, I'd, I'd have to say I'd go forward. Perfect. I'd go forward into it, like just to see how everything played out. That way you knew. That way you knew you can make some changes. Exactly. Learn learn from what I was originally going to do, and just make a couple tweaks. That's just it. We when I ask that question, everybody always goes back in time. They never see to go forward. So yeah. good, think, good, <laughs> good go. thinking on that. Thinking different. Yeah. Do you guys have a favorite sports quote? So many good ones. I, I mean, there's the one that I use in my dating life that uh, you miss every shot you don't take. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. That's uh yeah, that's definitely uh, definitely a, an iconic one that came to mind. Um, yeah, trying to trying to pick out just one right now. Um, probably has to be that uh, that Nick Lidstrom quote from earlier, just because of what it's done to my um, to my uh, preparation as a player. Just. You know, because um, everybody called him uh, called him Mister Perfect, and honestly, you can't uh, you can't be perfect if you don't do do the right things day in day out. So, just seeing him do uh, or hearing him, I guess, do everything the same every day uh, to make sure that he's ready for games. I think that's been the most uh, the most important sports quote for me. Okay. Yeah, and my favorite sports quote is by Tiger Woods, and he says, no matter how good you can get, you can always get better, and that's the exciting part. Um, It's my favorite because it speaks to everybody, no matter how good you think you are, how how good you do get, um, you can always get better. You just got to, like, keep getting better, and there's always areas that you can improve on, so. (laughs) If you were an animal... What would you be? Draft question. Hey, these are, I'm going to start hitting you with a couple yeah. of draft questions. These here. are the these are the uh, the hard hitting questions. Yeah. Um, 
I'd say I'd, uh, I'd be an eagle, you know, just get to survey everything below me. Um, you know, just, just feel, uh, the ability to, the ability to fly and, um, really get a sense of, of, uh, what's going on down below as a whole from a completely different point of view. I think it's, it's, uh, it's a good way of looking at the world from, uh, from multiple viewpoints. Okay. If I, if I could be an animal, I'd probably be probably a cheetah. Okay. Because I mean, not only like I got our uh, broadcaster nicknames and I got the cheetah, but, um, honestly, I, I choose cheetah because I mean, they're just like, they sneak up on their prey and then they pounce when it's ready. So I feel like cheetah is a good one. That's how you bury those loose pup bulls. Exactly. We always ask that question because I like to throw out what I would be. I would be a dolphin because I look like a dolphin because I have no hair and a nose. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I mean, you can almost still see the, uh, I dressed up as Don, as uh, Charlie Brown last night. So I had to sharpie on some, I had to sharpie some hair on my head. Uh, you guys have a favorite sports movie. Um, Miracles up there. Remember the Titans. Um, you know, all, all classics. But uh, if I had to choose one sports movie, I, yeah, that's a tough one. I think, I mean, you can't go wrong with Miracle. No. So, I think it I think it has to be miracle, you know. Being a Canadian, obviously it's tough to say that, but just just the story and the the um It didn't beat Canada to win. Exactly, exactly. So uh but you know um lots of bus so trips that that must be on the T V and all the bus trips. Oh hundred percent. Yeah, that and slap shot. <laughs> exactly, Mac. You got one, bud. Yeah, I'd go. I'd go Miracle too. I mean, okay. just what they overcame and that team, that Russian team. It's, I mean, it, it was just it was something that will never be forgotten. And I feel like it's special because it happened in hockey too. I mean, that's that's a big part of it. So, Aiden, I got a little idea of what yours might be, but do you have a favorite sports? Both of you guys have a favorite sports hero or a guy that you kind of mirrored your game after? Yeah, I mean, kind of uh, <laughs> kind of gave mine away earlier. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Nicholas Lidstrom. Yeah, he's uh, he's been a guy that I've just wanted to emulate ever since I um, started playing defense. He's just – the way he carried himself, the way he played, it's just so, uh, so, so great. Like that's, that's how you can put it. He was, he was great. And, um, definitely. Legend. Yeah, it, it, yeah. So I'd have to say Nicholas Lidstrom. Okay. Mac. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously I try to, take things from different players so i mean mirroring my game after someone is a little tough but um I, i'd say I've, I've watched pavel datsuk the most just just some small little things he did the small details um like how good he was at protecting the puck and just his uh stick detail where like he'd strip pucks and um place pucks in perfect areas and just being in the right position like i said that's one thing i'm trying to work on so i mean i feel like he's if he played longer he'd be one of the greats for sure but i mean he's still great but i feel he's like still, he's still playing over in russia i think yeah yeah he's still in russia but the nhl i feel like doesn't give him enough credit i feel like he's he was so special 
Yeah, that's for sure. He is like almost underrated. Yeah. Uh, who's your team DJ, or do you guys prefer to prefer to use headphones for pregame? Yeah, I'm big. I'm a big headphone guy. I've got a uh, got a playlist that I listen to before every game. Just puts me in uh, puts me in the right mindset, and uh, yeah, this gives me that uh, gives me that edge that I need. I'm a big so a couple guys on our team take <clears throat> Ox in the locker room, so yeah. it's kind of a mix. I mean, I have my favorites, but can't really say. Uh, Dave, you but, yeah. Sorry. Well, no, you go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say, um, I used to be a big headphone guy, but now, now I just kind of rock with whatever. Okay, if you had to choose one song to play before you went out there on the ice, maybe your pregame song. What song would you want it to be? That's a good one. I know. I just made that question up on the fly. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Um, man, I shuffle through a ton of good ones. Um, Do you have a top couple then? Make it narrow it down? Yeah, for sure. Uh, God's Country by Blake Sheldon definitely, definitely gets me there. Um, I got a bunch of, uh, bunch of rap songs. Like uh, I like listening to, um, gives me a little bit of a little bit of that swagger. But if I did have to choose one song, probably be uh, be God's Country. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm. I don't think you guys know this one, but it's called Bad Memories. It's, it's a it's a really good song. It's more of like a. Uh, I don't, I don't really know the genre, but it's it's a good song. So okay, my... okay, I hit you with another draft question here that Cole Perfetti once told us: uh, if there was a twenty dollar bill on the counter or a hundred dollar bill in the bottom of the toilet, but you don't know what's in the toilet, which bill do you want? Obviously, take the hundred dollar bill. You know, whatever. Uh... Whatever's in there, you can wash off, but you get you get eighty more dollars if you go through the go through the mock. Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Mac, Mac, you want to say a hundred? You want to say a hundred? The uh, the reason they ask that question is because they want to know that you can get your hands dirty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just thinking, like, yeah, the twenty is easier, but like the hundred, like, you're going higher, but you, you there's more risk. So, yeah, I, I feel like I, I would go a hundred, but you might get been. that. You might get that question one day if you haven't already, Aiden. <laughs> uh, but also, the answer could be you could take them both. That's a good one. <laughs> that's that's. I might steal that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Some teams do like rookie karaoke or initiation kind of thing. If you had to sing one karaoke song, what song are you choosing? Oh yeah, we uh, we had our uh, rookie idol. Yeah. Um, I uh, I sang September by Earth Wind and Fire. You know, hit the uh, hit the high notes pretty nicely. It was a uh, was a crowd favorite. So yeah, I'm really. Uh, I would choose uh, Sleeve by Nate Smith. That's my go-to. Okay. If you need a real easy one, there's a song called Tequila. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Tequila. It's only got, yeah. It's only got, yeah. it's only got yeah. one word. It's hard to screw that up. Yeah. We've, uh, yeah, we've, had, we've had a couple of those in the, okay. in the Rookie Idol. Um, do you have a, a hidden talent? I'm a very good. I'm I'm a very good sketch artist. Okay, like you draw. Yeah, yeah. I can uh, I can draw. I can draw pretty well. Okay, I used to I draw to a say. lot too. I used to be a pretty good drawer as well. There you go. 
Uh, I'd have to say that's my that's my hidden talent. Okay. If I were in, I would have said cook because he's a damn good oh. cook. But um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like hidden talent. I mean, I could honestly say cook. I feel like I can chef it up once in a while um, if I really have to. <laughs> so once in a while. If I'm not already in there, Mac will make some uh, some good food. What what what's his go to? Some some yeah. solid breakfast sandwiches for sure. Um, he's made some he's made some pancakes. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, pancakes. Really. I got well. I got a I, I got a couple <laughs> I got a couple breakfast questions coming up here, so we'll get to that oh, shortly. There you go. Uh, do you guys collect anything or have a favorite piece of memorabilia? Um, definitely has to be a game ball at my, my only ever, uh, baseball game that I went to, you know, uh, the rest of the family went to go get food and I was sitting there waiting, uh, watching the game and, um, future hall of famer, Buster Posey, uh, went and gave me, gave me a ball. So that was, that was pretty special. For me, I mean, just because like our dad has worked with so many great players, he's gotten some pretty cool things. So, I mean, one thing is a uh, signed stick from uh, Mike Smith. That was, that's probably mine. That was very cool. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Mac, take us back to your first goal with the steel. And Aiden, uh, take us back to your first goal with Brooks. Um, do you guys still have the puck? Um, up here they're uh, they're uh, keeping all the all the rookie pucks so they can they can get them uh, get them framed and okay. Oh, I think getting froze up a little bit there. Yeah, I think so. What about you, bud? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean my uh, my first goal. It's kind of. It like squeaked through the goalie's armpit. So I mean, but uh, yeah, I still I still have that puck. I got taped up, and so that's in my my bag right now. So okay, do you Sorry guys to have me out there? Hey, it's okay. We we got you. Yeah. The uh, um, do you have a yeah? Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say uh, yeah. I got my uh, got my first one the other night. Took a. Took a while, but uh, it was definitely definitely a relief to to finally break the ice. And uh, yeah, just walked in, um, saw there was a there's a screen by the defender, so shot uh, shot short side high, and um, yeah, goalie never really never really stood a chance. Okay, you guys have a go to Selly when you score. Definitely, uh, definitely get get uh, some of my teammates on me for a little stick twirl twitch I do. So <laughs> definitely, whenever I score, I try to try to toss a stick twirl to uh, to get the get the team going. Okay. I don't, I don't think. I mean, when I score and I, like when I sell it, it's kind of like out of instinct. Like it's either. I'm really, really in, like passionate about that goal or something else, but I, I, I feel like I, I don't sell you too much. So, okay. I mean, I'm out in beer league doing the John Cena. You can't see me. And you're like, <laughs> you're right, right in the goalie's face. It's usually when I get hammered from behind. Um, Love it. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite jersey number and a nickname? Um. I'd have to go with number 16. Uh, I've had that number for basically my whole career except for the past past two years. So, um, yeah, but if I were to if I were to choose a jersey number, it'd definitely be 16. And, um, yeah, I'd say, uh, I don't know. You're gonna have to gonna have to come back to me on that, uh, okay. on that second one. Okay, Mac. 
Um, yeah, 17. That's my number. Um, I mean, I've had it for a while, so I've kind of, it's kind of grown on me. And uh, the uh, nickname I got it this year is Breener. So that's, that's my, uh, that's my nickname. Okay. Uh, yeah, I probably have to go with Sally. There you go. And, uh, been given that for a while, but uh, yeah, definitely have a couple others tossed in there. Holy, there you go. Um, what is the best and worst Halloween candy? I'd say uh, definitely worst are those uh, those Tootsie Rolls. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know how long some of them have been in there, but uh, yeah, never really Since the 80s. get excited. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, never really get excited seeing those. And then obviously uh, growing up, the best ones are when you get those uh, those king size chocolate bars, whether they're the mm-hmm. – my personal favorite is the Coffee Crisp, but I've been told that only six-year-olds like Coffee Crisp. So mm-hmm. apparently I'm <laughs> – uh, Apparently I'm 60. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, I, I hate black licorice. That, that one's probably my least favorite, but um, <clears throat> my favorite is probably just Kit Kat. Just plain, simple. Okay. Um, I got a couple of quick response questions before we wrap this up here. Uh, what's your go-to breakfast? I just to say uh breakfast sandwich you know um me and my brother have gotten gotten very uh very gifted at making them we've uh we've got our got our secret recipes so yeah definitely got to go with breakfast sandwich yeah the family recipe <laughs> yeah i'd go smoothie quick and easy okay um do you have a favorite halloween costume you ever was when a, I went a few years, years in the row when I was uh, a hockey player, you know, I just put put my hockey gear on and got some uh, got some face paint and put a couple stitches and I was good to go. So I'd have to say uh, have to say a hockey player. Okay. Yeah, when I was younger, I was a ninja, so that was, that was probably my go-to. Okay. Do you know what a Canadian tuxedo is? Canadian tuxedo. I don't. Not familiar with. Hey, it. so it's jean jacket with jeans, like your denim, denim on denim. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we usually ask the American football players that they have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I bet. Who's your favorite Disney princess? And we know you got one. That's a tough one. I'd have to go the uh, what's her name? The girl from Brave. That's uh, she's she's definitely badass. Got okay. The, got the I can't ball. remember. I can't remember the name either. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, yeah. That that'd be my favorite. She definitely okay. um, yeah. Definitely got some got some grit to her. Mm. I have to go Snow White. Okay. Yeah. I I always go with Belle from Beauty and the Beast because that's yeah. like, that's like my date in life, right? I'm the Beast, and she <laughs> she's the beautiful girl that I try to I try to lock that's up. That's a good one. I try to lock her up because she loves me. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite actress or actor? Actor, uh, gotta go with gotta go with Al Pacino. I mean, he's a great. Been in some, been in some great sports movies. Um, just watched Scarface for the first time on a bus trip. So, yeah. Did like, you guys uh, watch that? that that's not great. really. That's not really a teenage friendly. Like, <laughs> watched it on my own terms. Oh, okay. With, uh, yeah. With the headphones in. So. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, but definitely got to be Al Pacino. Okay. I'd have to go with Kevin Hart. There you go. That's a good one. He always makes great movies. Um, deep sea or outer space, if you had to travel to one of them? I'd have to go uh, go outer space. You know, it's 
not uh not many people get to get to go up there and just it's got to be a got to be a special feeling and a I'm sure sure a scary feeling but yeah. it's got to be a uh, a special feeling being up there so far away from everybody else okay yeah I'd probably be the same I go to outer space okay spring summer fall or winter what is your favorite time of the year big winter go, yeah. Uh, I love winter. Yeah, I gotta go winter. Okay. Yeah, hey. You know, that's when it's when you get uh, the hockey season in full swing. You got Christmas. You got the snow falling. Well, not where we are now, but <laughs> you get a little. When we go back for Christmas, we get a little escape from the snow instead. So, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely got to be winter. Are you a coffee or a tea person? Coffee, a hundred percent. I don't. I don't like either. But okay. No hey, doubt. Yeah, I, I live off coffee up here. Yeah, you got the good stuff too. The Tim Hortons. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have a go-to Gatorade color? I'd have to say yellow. I uh, the underrated yellow. Yeah, so underrated. I I don't see yellow getting much love, but no. uh, I love it. You know, so yeah. refreshing. That's my go-to as well. I gotta um, go red. Just okay. red. I, I used to not be a big red guy, but I'm I'm back to it. What color is your stick tape? You know, I uh, I usually switch. I was white for the longest time, but. Went the past few games going uh, going black, and now found myself in a point streak, so I might just have to stick with black. Okay. I'm white, top and bottom. So. Okay. Uh, cat or dog person? I heard a dog in the background. Yeah, we're dogs, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely dog. We got, uh, got a golden retriever back home, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, pancakes or waffles if you had to eat one of them for the rest of your life waffles yeah i'd have to go with waffles something about it feels uh i feel uh feel lighter yeah nothing like filling up those little dents in the waffles with syrup or jam or something exactly you know Uh, you get yeah uh, early bird or a night owl i'm more of i like I like the mornings. I'm, okay. I'm an early guy. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a night owl. Like, I love, uh, I love the mornings when I'm up. But yeah, definitely, definitely harder for me to fall asleep than it is for me to, um, than it is easy for me to wake up. So, okay, gotta be a night owl. Would you rather watch comedy movies or drama movies? I'm comedy. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big drama guy. I mean, love my comedy movies, but uh, yeah, I've been definitely on a tear when it comes to the dramas recently. Okay, uh, Halloween or Fourth of July? Halloween. Halloween. It's gotta yeah. be. You know. Yeah, me, me too. I love it. I love Halloween. It's my favorite. I take. I, I always find a costume that I can make fun of myself at. Like last night was the Charlie Brown. Yeah. There you go. If you had a superpower, what would it be? I'd super say, speed. Uh, super sorry, speed. Max, go ahead, Max. Super speed. Okay. Um, I'd be fast. <laughs> say the power to uh, power to freeze time or manipulate time. Okay. I feel like that's uh, yeah. That'd be yeah. Uh, Good power. Yeah, I always go with uh, mind reading, I guess, would be the one, because I'd like to know what my date was thinking before she left me behind. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there if, you go. That's yeah. can't go wrong with that. If you were a flavor, what flavor would you be? Um, That's a good one, too. I'd say... Uh, I'd say caramel, you know, got, uh, 
got some sweetness, got some, got some richness, yeah. you know, definitely, definitely not, uh, definitely not plain. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever heard that one. So that's a good one. There you go. <laughs> I go vanilla flat out plain vanilla. Okay. I always go with mint because I'm mint. There you go. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, last question I got for you guys. Um, how important being young athletes is it the stuff that you post on social media and uh you know, ten years from now it's gonna come might come back to haunt you. Yeah, you know, I'd say uh you gotta you gotta carry yourself as a professional, whether you are or you aren't yet, like it's uh it's so crucial to um to just you know just if if you're questioning about posting something don't post it like it's just it's much easier to leave something unsaid than to say the wrong things especially uh especially now that social media is so so at large and um things can be twisted and taken out of context so you just gotta you just gotta be professional always when it comes to social media because the whole world can access you i mean like again so just being smart and don't just everything you put out there just know that anyone can see it and just like just have that in the back of your mind so if you post something that you know everyone will see and it's the wrong thing and i mean that's kind of on you so i mean just just always being mindful of that stuff that's just it we try to we try to always tell the young guys just be careful i would hate to see something 10 years down the road come back to haunt you guys or mm -hmm. something something so stupid right the, yeah what like uh, we had this one running back on the show he's gonna be like the top running back in the nfl draft but he said you don't post anything that you don't want your grandma to see yeah, yeah. that's perfect <laughs> yeah my grandma would kick my ass uh <laughs> so uh i want to thank you guys for taking the time and giving me your sunday uh i know you guys are busy and i hope to run into you uh, mac down the road and Eden, if you're back in vancouver We'll run into you, hopefully. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Hey, appreciate it.